Hey, thanks for checking out my channel and clicking on my face. Uh, I'm John Stark from MacTheMovieGuy.com, and this is my review of RRR. This film is currently available on Netflix. It does not have audio description. It has English dubbing that they've recently added, which makes me think they think that's enough. Because <laughs> they... Originally, this film was only offered in Hindi, um, and they recently added dubbed audio tracks for Spanish, English, and Brazilian Portuguese to expand the accessibility of a film that is garnering quite a bit of attention, <clears throat> and Netflix has the control over it. So, um, if they do release an English audio description track for it, I will re-review the film. But I'm a blind film critic. I review films with audio description or as they present themselves, um, which in this case is English dubbed. <clears throat> also on my channel um, is or will be, hopefully, uh, a video of me watching a chunk of the film from RRR and sort of allowing my audience to immerse themselves in what the hell it's like watching a film like RRR without audio description, because it's not the experience you would think um, for a film that's nominated for Critics' Choice for Best Picture. Uh, very much lost in translation, <laughs> as it were. Um, yeah, so uh, it... I say that with trepidation because my video, for some reason, is still pending. Um, it's been like 12 hours. I know the video is a little over an hour long, uh, but it's a three-hour movie. I can't even imagine what it would have been like if I had done the whole movie. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what YouTube... I've never done a, vi a video over an hour before, so maybe there's there's some sort of secret secret cabal of people that have to... Look at uh, look at my movie and look at my hour long thing and make sure it's not I didn't pirate a movie. Uh, I have two brief moments where I have like proof of life sound, uh, so that people know I am what I am doing what I'm doing, but I'm listening to it through headphones, so you wouldn't know otherwise. Otherwise, it's just like an hour and a half of me making like ooh uh, oh oh, uh. <laughs> it's, just, it's not really interesting. <laughs> um. So, uh, yeah, so this review will be posted after that video is done pending. I don't know when that'll be, so <laughs> I don't know when this video is going to go up. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it, this is going to be a film I'm not grading, because I think the film is probably better than a grade I would give it, and I would, I think it's unwatchable is the grade. I want to create a grade called unwatchable, basically. I addressed this earlier with Emily the Criminal, uh, where I called it just unwatchable. Um, meaning that I, I wouldn't recommend the film to anyone who's blind. There's not enough here, uh, in a, in present as, as presented, um, to be able to follow it. I have no idea what this film was about. Uh, I mean, I, I see the little blurb that, like, IMDb wants to tell me the film is about. And what I would guess the film is about um, is there's some sort of historical backstory at the beginning, which I didn't understand. There was some, there was, like, a group of 75 fighters that reduced to three, and they called their names out. And, uh, and we found this guy, and he likes this girl... Uh, and, uh, he keeps talking about how, so funny, he's like, your name is really long, and I was like, her name is Jenny, even if you made that longer, it's Jennifer, like, <laughs> and either the guy doing the dubbing didn't realize that the guy doing the acting was joking about the length of her name, or the film is stupid, <laughs> I can't tell. <laughs> because he kept playing it straight. He was like, oh, your name's really long. I'll try to remember that. <laughs> I'm just like, Jenny is really long to you. I, what, 
what world would you have to live in for Jenny to be considered a long name? Where, where like your your names would have to just be like, ah, ooh, ah. <laughs> just like like just like sounds at that point because Jenny is just not a long name. It's like typically it's spelled with five letters. If that's long to you, I don't know. I don't know what world you come from. I don't know what world that is. Like, it's it's such a weird statement for him to be consistently making throughout the film. It makes me wonder if it was lost in translation, if it was lost, if the the intent was lost. But he makes many references to, <laughs> to the length of her name, and um, it even makes me wonder if that is her name. But then I looked it up on IMDb, and it is her name. That is her character's name. So. She's credited as Jennifer, as Jenny. So, I don't know what to do with that. Because at first I was like, oh, she was probably named something else. And then in the dubbing, they just, they didn't want to call her that. So they they just reduced it to something else and just changed her name. Like, we Americanized her name for the, Amer for the English release of this film. And her name used to be something else. And no, appar apparently that is her actual name in the film. So the whole thing does not make sense to me. But uh, she's, like, aristocratic, and he's, you know, street rat. <laughs> Stop that. Uh, just a little snack. <laughs> uh, yeah, he's Aladdin, basically. Um, we've stumbled into the plot of Aladdin. Uh, he, she's out, like, wandering the streets, and he helps her out, and... Uh, that's how they become friends, and um, he gets to go back to her palatial home, uh, and there he finds there's, a, like, a girl that I think is, I don't know, has she been kidnapped? I, I, is she, she's some, some somehow there, she's against her will, uh, so he has to figure out how to go back and get her. Um, to be fair, I don't know that Jenny was in on it because she's very protective of Aladdin. I'm just going to call him Aladdin, because I actually never picked up on what his name was in the film. Um, I think the girl's name was Molly. I feel like that's right. Um, so Molly's in there, and she's, uh, you know, she's, I don't know, she's in some sort of stress or danger. Oh, there's this thing with this train and this kid, and they're, like, trying to rescue the kid, I didn't know what that was. There was, a, a, like, a tiger scene. I, I couldn't tell you what that was either. Uh, Natu Natu happens uh, around the same, around the time I'm talking about. It's, like, a, a dance dance sequence. So for those who have heard a lot about that song, I thought it was kind of dope. Uh, I don't know if it's in my top five for the year, but it was cool. The thing about RRR is it's, like, it's, like, constant music almost, like, the person who wrote the score for RRR, like, RRR should be in the top scores of the year. I don't know why it's not, because it's, it's, it relies so heavily on music. It's obnoxious. That's part of the reason I can't understand the film, is because there's almost no dialogue. This would be a terrible film to nominate for screenplay, because there's barely any dialogue in the film. For a three-hour film, for three, when you think about a three-hour film... This is kind of like Avatar, but, like, even with less dialogue. Um, obviously, the spectacle is on screen, and they're scoring it. So, um, the music is such a huge highlight, especially for us in the blind and visually impaired community, when we have nothing else to go off of. We're just sitting here listening to some really dope music, which is kind of like the thing that I enjoyed about RR was just sitting there listening to... You know, um, some really neat music. I love how several of the songs felt like they started out as one thing and just evolved into like a new song, but you were still listening to the same song. I thought that was kind of cool how they managed to do that. Like, I felt like I would, it started out as one thing and suddenly I was in something else, but I'm pretty sure it's the same song. Like, I didn't change songs. <laughs> um, it doesn't help the interpretation because all of the songs are sung in Hindi, so I have no idea what they're about, but, um, so, uh, yeah, that's, but they're fun, I mean, they got great beats, the, uh, the percussion sec section in the, uh, the orchestra is having a great time, um, unfortunately, there's some singing, or some autotune clearly made its way over to India, and that's, 
that's unfortunate that we've we let it get out of this country. That's our uh, auto tune is our COVID for the rest of the world. We've sent auto tune out, and now it's it's infected everybody and their music, and their music will never be the same. Um, yeah, sorry about that one. Uh, yeah, so there's there's some some you know uh, Kanye West sounding singers in here like that uh, uh, permanent auto tune sound on their voice. Um, and uh, so he like he tries to get the girl out, and some some shit goes down. And he gets captured, and then they're like trying to make an example of him. And they keep talking about, like, oh, well, um, I think they beat him, but then, like, nothing really happened, and it wasn't really punishing him. And they're like, oh, well, what if we kill the girl that he wanted to try to save? Uh, and then there's, like, some other thing where they're like, well, we can't kill him there, because he'll be martyred. And then everybody will just turn that into a place of worship. We can't have that. <laughs> and it's... And the film just kind of goes... I mean, it just kind of goes from there. Like, I really don't know what the film is about. I, I don't know if the film was ever about rescuing the girl from the beginning. Because I couldn't clearly follow the film. I don't know if the film... Oddly, IMDb says the film is about two historical heroes. I don't know who the second historical hero is. <laughs> I have no idea. Are they... I have no idea if they're the... Like, who's the other one? Um, there's some really funny scenes, because it's dubbed, uh, that are unintentionally funny. Uh, the main guy, who I'm calling Aladdin, uh, is, when he meets Jenny, uh, they speak, they don't speak the same language. But there's a guy that speaks both of their languages, and he translates. So, um, but everything's in English. So, <laughs> so it's a conversation where the two people are talking back and forth like they can understand each other. Uh, but there's this other guy that's just like, she wants to know if you <laughs> And, um, yeah, that was, uh, it was unintentionally hilarious. That's kind of what happens sometimes when, uh, there isn't a lot of thought put, in, put into the dubbing process about not being able to understand, uh, and then you lose that, you know, that little glimmer of, of, um, intention in that scene I guess so yeah I've seen RRR I don't know how else to prove that to you guys I mean it's very it's it, there's not much uh there's not much I can say about it because a lot of the film is just really long sequences of something happening while music plays underneath it with no dialogue or with very little dialogue where somebody just like says one thing over the course of a seven to ten minute sequence i mean some of these sequences are long and they have nothing in them <laughs> um just music just really dope music so probably it, for my year end uh you know year end list don't be surprised if this ends up in original score even though i'm considering it unwatchable because it's really hard for me to not after listening to three hours of the music, it's really hard for me to not pull that out and say this score was amazing. I have I can't comment on anything else. I guess the sound design was fine. Um, again, I had an amazing opportunity to um, <laughs> to, to hone in on the sound design. Uh, I didn't have a problem with it. The Dolby editors seemed like they did their job. So um, I heard bells and and gates opening and you know so i feel like a lot of that was just dolby editing <coughs> um yeah those are my thoughts on rrr uh it needs audio description i i missed so much i have no idea what any of the characters look like i have no idea what their age ranges are um, I actually racially don't even know what the makeup of, of the characters are, but I think there are, um, based on the fact that, uh, Ray Stevenson is in this movie, <laughs> I know there are, uh, English actors, English speaking, native, native English speaking actors in this film. Um, but I don't know which ones were being dubbed, uh, translated as such and which ones were not. 
Um, I'm going to guess the ones with the most English names probably were, but I also don't know that they weren't gentrifying names because I don't know the names of the non-English speaking characters, except, you know, when he's trying to rescue a girl named Molly, I, you know, it makes it really hard for me to figure out, uh, who is what. Um, so I need an auto description for that because Molly is not a name that I in, inherently go, oh, Indian. You know, I don't, I don't, that great Hindi name, you know, I don't, I don't immediately think of that with Molly, you know, uh, so yeah, it, um, it, it presents itself a problem there as well. Um, I'm sure this film has great costuming. I have no idea what the costumes look like. Um, it's a period piece. It's set in like 1920. So, uh, there, I'm sure they would they would have done some excellent work making sure to represent the period. I don't even have the slightest idea of what the costuming here looks like. Uh, I never got entrances or exits. I never knew who was in a scene and who wasn't. Um, I never knew where we were most of the time. I mean, a lot of times conversations were being had and there were only a couple of times where it was really obvious. There was like one time where Jenny's like, let's go look at my room. <laughs> And then she's, like, pointing out things in her room. She's like, that's my bed. Check out this painting. And I'm like, okay, so they're in her room. Because she just said, let's go check out. So logically, I was able to figure out... Now, it's entirely possible, by the way, that she is batshit crazy. And they went to, like, somewhere else in the house. And it's not her room. So, I... <laughs> you know, but... I, I I would like to use my intelligence on that one and say, I, I did figure that one out, you know? So it, it it's not 100% across the board impossible. Sometimes the dialogue does set up a scene where <laughs> you're like, you're like, oh, check out my man cave. <laughs> and then you're like, well, they're in the man cave. <laughs> I mean, yeah, so... But most of the time, I didn't really know where, where they were. Even the train sequence, I didn't know, are we inside the train or are we outside the train? <laughs> you know, um, there's some little boy, there's some, like, water, and he needs help. And I don't know if they're, like, they could be running along the roof of the train. They could be running inside the train. I have no idea. So, um, I didn't know where the tiger was. I also don't know if it's a tiger. could have been a lion, by the way. Um, I... You know, I mean, it roars kind of like it's a big cat. There was a big cat, basically, the attack in the film. Um, so, yeah, a lot of the specificity is lost. I, I have no idea. And I think if I think about, like, if I was a voting member of a body of that was voting on this film, which hopefully at some point in my life, uh, you know, bucket list, I get to be a voting member of something. Um <laughs> what would I vote for this film for? How would I even do that? So this film would lose my vote because I can't understand it. Because it simply just does not have the accessibility for an audience to be able to understand it. And you can have the conversation about like, well, is every film supposed to have audio description? And it's like, I don't know. Do you want to be able to get into every building? Like, it's a very ableist thing to say because you have access to everything. Because I was there, by the way. Um, I was there, like, about five years ago, I, I could see. And I could go wherever I wanted and do, you know... I mean, except for, like, walk on to, like, a military base, I was pretty much good to go. <laughs> you know, I couldn't just walk into the CIA and be like, I own this place! You know, I get that. Like, there's some, some limitations, but, um... But the kind of limitations that we experience, that we, when we ask for uh, accessibility or equality or some semblance of equality in those areas, and people look at us and they're like, you really expect that to happen? That's cost prohibitive. It's like, well, uh, what, if, what if we told you that? What if I told you that, <laughs> that we can't do that for you uh, because it's cost prohibitive? And you as a completely able-bodied, sighted, uh, you can hear type person, you're just out there wandering around and suddenly somebody's like, sorry, I uh, can't let you do that. It's cost prohibitive. And you're like, what do you mean? This is, this is a road. I need to drive on this. Nope. Can't drive on this road. Sorry. We took this road away from you. Uh, but what about those other guys? They're driving on the road. I know, but you can't. Sorry. That's kind of what it feels like. Um, <laughs> it just kind of feels like it's selective because someone else out there, it's not like we're voting for which films 
to audio describe isn't like the blind community got together every year and we like okay guys they're gonna audio describe 100 titles for us this year which ones do we want them to be you know that's how it happens so somebody chooses for us <clears throat> which films get audio description and which films don't and uh the studios decide whether or not to put audio description on a film and audio description or not so it's like somebody else is filtering out and deciding whether or not i get to see rrr or I get to see Triangle of Sadness, or uh, The Cathedral, or Emily the Criminal, or something else, you know? It's, um, somebody's made those choices for me. I didn't make those choices for myself. I have no input as to which films. Meanwhile, Netflix has absolutely no problem committing itself full heart wholeheartedly to every single crappy Christmas film. <laughs> <laughs> making sure they're all accessible jesus um but me but a film that might get a best picture nomination no and bardo a film that might get an international feature nomination nah it doesn't have it either but uh i believe in santa yeah they paid for audio description for that they won't pay for it for bardo but they'll pay for it for i believe in santa um <laughs> so uh you know, it's just, I don't get to pick, so I have to just say, yeah, I want more, and I want audio description. I have to be Oliver. Please, sir, can I have some more? Because then I come to film, like, RRR, which is, it's been nominated for multiple awards. It's shortlisted for some things at the Oscars that are outside, because it, it's not, it can't be nominated for international feature. So, um, it, uh, it's not India's submission, um, so it's being nominated in, in multiple categories because it's being submitted just as a regular film. And it has a shot at, like, Best Director and Best Picture. And that was my experience with a film that might be one of the top ten films of the year, was this fractured, um, questionable experience. I sat through three, all three hours. I did the whole, I did the Avatar with this film. Um, and, uh, so, Yeah. Uh, we we have to have audio description on more titles. I don't really care. I don't really care what anybody else has to say about that. I'm just going to keep saying it until it happens. Um, dubbing is not the same thing. Dubbing did not help me know anything about any of the characters or their or entrances and exits. Or it didn't tell me anything about the set or the costuming. It didn't help me with fights. Uh, it didn't help me any time the music dropped out. And it didn't tell me what was going on in those scenes. I have no idea. There long stretches of music where I don't even know what happened. I have no idea what that scene was. Was it dancing? Was it fighting? Was it a sex scene? Was it like like little babies rolling around on the floor? Was, was it like, I, I have no idea. So, um, I don't know what to do with that. Uh, so I just say it's unwatchable. So, um, my grade for RR is unwatchable. Um, yeah, that's sad, but true. Uh, there's no way that you're going to be able to follow this film if you're in the blind and visually impaired community and, uh, get anything out of it. Um, I barely, <laughs> three hours into it, uh, hopefully by this point there will also be a video of me and you can watch me kind of trying to explain what it's like. I wish I could do it with sound. I wish YouTube would just let me do it, you know, like a, sort of like a riff tracks version of, of, um, you know, mystery science theater, the damn thing. Uh, <laughs> but, um, I'm sure that's, they'd be like, ah, oh, that's no piracy. It's like, so I can't even comment and explain how, this is the best way I can think of to explain what it's like is to put headphones on and listen to the film and have my camera pointed at me. <sighs> I don't know how the people at Cinema Sins get away with it, but um, I need to figure that out because that's what I want to do. Uh, maybe because it's fractured and fragmented and they don't do the whole film like that. Anyway, um, please subscribe because I want to keep talking about audio description because we deserve more than what we get. Um, and... Uh, I am. I have a website, MacTheMovieGuy.com. You can follow me on Twitter at MacTheMovieGuy. 
you can go to the audio description project, avp.acb.org, and you can find movies that do have audio description and find out where you can watch them. And you can go to theadna.org and you can look up uh, who is working on the narration for your favorite films and television series. I'm sorry I couldn't give you a better opinion of RRR today. I feel like there are fans of RRR that are like up in arms over this, but this is the reality. That's what my life is like. So if my life upsets you, I'm sorry. I don't really know what to do about that, but um, this is what watching film for blind people can be like sometimes. Uh, it can be very unintelligible. So I plan on watching more movies and reviewing them for you guys. So stay tuned. I will see you on the other side.